It's Walt Disney World Clicks. I'm your host, Kevin. This week, we're getting started in the boardwalk area. Now, we are seeing not only Christmas decorations, but this new stand. So, obviously, something new for the holidays. Made out of gingerbread and little candies, and it is meant to sell sweet treats like gingerbread itself. There are many hotels getting into the holiday spirit around Walt Disney World. This is the Swan and Dolphin, and they've got a chocolate display. They give you a sense of the scale here. Here's a full-grown adult over on the side. Obviously, these are much larger even than the adult. The whole room smells like chocolate, so have a look at that one, the Swan and Dolphin, if you get a chance. You can uh, see on the sign they have on the side that it's about 5 million calories worth of chocolate that they've got set up there. A perennial favorite around the corner from there over at the Yacht Club is this uh, holiday train set. Now, I don't come every year to these hotels, and so I have not uh, had this kind of resident in my memory that it's always been there, but uh, a friend assures me that this is something that's uh, typically there and has a lot of um, smaller, subtle Disney details in it. The Beach Club has this chocolate carousel that's been redone every year, as it always is, and uh, it's got uh, decorations around the outside, such as this horse decorated to pirates this year, the Yacht Club lighthouse or um, a dock in the, uh, in the other corner there, and then finally the Little Mermaid type statuary, also made out of chocolate. Switching over to Epcot, we're looking at Morocco, the Spice Road table, where they've got the shutters now painted on the outside. We're going to peek in one of the windows there through the, uh, through the construction wall, and you'll see that they've got an accent wall and some bookshelves. Not horribly exciting, but it's our first peek into the restaurant, and they've got new awnings set up and so forth, looking more and more like they're going to add signage any day now. Over to Animal Kingdom, the former Petra Fries, Trilobites, as it's been called for several years, uh, serves turkey legs, or rather it did. Uh, I, what I noticed this past weekend is now it serves desserts, such as the uh, waffle bowl sundae and so forth. Didn't try any of them, though, to see how big they are. FastPass is going to have some changes this week at um, Animal Kingdom. They're going to do a test for four days starting on December 18th where they're going to turn off the paper FastPass machines and they're going to have everyone use magic bands or RFID admission cards. And so perhaps uh, there will be RFID readers scattered throughout the park um, looking at where the traffic flow is and uh, how they can better serve the traffic how they can better serve the customers, actually. I'm not entirely positive this is an RFID reader, but it didn't look like a light, and it didn't seem to have any other um, a purpose. So I, I took a gamble with this shot. I'm not sure that's an RFID reader, but it could be. Back over to Dinosaur. It's been several months uh, since this, uh, this effect has been turned back on. It is a kind of a green time vortex um, light that you see when you're time traveling into the past and then in your time traveling back from the past. Uh, it's been restored from the original um, appearance of the attraction, but I just haven't had a chance to take a picture of it yet. Over at Collie River Rapids, also several months ago, they added these storage lockers, which as you can see are decorated with plants and uh, animals like a peacock and so forth. Uh, and if you look at the signage, you will note that the first two hours are completely free. So it's a great perk for people wanting to go on Collie River Rapids and not want to get wet. Over to Expedition Everest, where they, uh, at the end of this queue here, this is the very end of the Fast Pass queue, but it's the same way on the standby side, um, there have been screens added some months ago, but the screens are now turned on. So as you can see, the uh, screens make kind of uh, tongue-in-cheek references to the Yeti like much of the museum and rest of the, uh, the sense of humor of this attraction. The single rider entrance sign now has a, a wait time. I don't know that I've seen that before, 20 minutes on this particular day. On Discovery Island, this shop has long sold ice cream, but it has not long had this particular sign on the outside, kind of making it a little bit more obvious what it is they do there. Another sign on Discovery Island, the Discovery Island Trail. Uh, we are opposite the first date over here on the right-hand side, if you're curious about where exactly this is. They've cut away some of the foliage. want people to really get in there and explore a little bit more. Nearer to Pizza Fari over on the side, you will see these construction walls. They are there to uh, hide the otter enclosure, which has been drained. They're doing some work over there. And that meant that they had to drain the catfish enclosure as well. There's usually a sign here for the catfish. I have no word on what happened to the catfish. Um, presumably, he'll come back once the work is done. They share a water space there. Over to Downtown Disney, where they've started using food trucks to serve Disney food. And now we're next to Lanuba as we take this picture. Not very busy at this moment um, with the food trucks. You'll see that they are themed to the four theme parks. So there's one for Disney's Hollywood Studios called Superstar Catering. And uh, these are the menu items. Things like a lamb meatball sandwich and spinach and feta beef meatball sandwich. Uh, and uh, I didn't get one, so I can't tell you whether these are good values for the prices. But uh, that's what the menu signs look like. 
Namaste Cafe is the one for Disney's Animal Kingdom. It has a name that uh, sounds like it comes from Africa, but it's got these designs that mirror the ice cream truck you find next to Anandapur in Asia. So it's, it's kind of all over uh, Animal Kingdom. Whereas the menu items uh, seem to be a little bit more on the uh, African side. At least the, the obvious one, the tandoori shrimp, um, uses African spices. And that's probably one I will get, but I didn't uh, get it yet, so I can't, again, say how large it is. Opposite Disney Quest, these walls have popped up, and it turns out these are for House of Blues, which is adding something of a quick service uh, facility, so even more food options in this part of downtown Disney. Christmas decorations and these little lounge chairs set up in the middle of downtown Disney. We're really here to see the food truck. So this is a third food truck. This one themed to Epcot, and as you see, it's called World Showcase of Flavors. And uh, it's meant to highlight uh, some of the favorites from the Food and Wine Festival. So beef sliders, pierogies, and then the lobster roll. Now, I didn't try it. Uh, for 1825, though, one expects that's a pretty good-sized um, lobster roll itself. And the fourth and final new food truck, this one themed to the Magic Kingdom, is over by Portobello. And if we look at its menu, we will see that it's actually calling to mind um, food items from different Magic Kingdoms around the globe. So perhaps this is Hong Kong, and this is Magic Kingdom in Orlando, and then the corn dog um, from Disneyland Park, meaning the freshly dipped one tastes more like a state fair corn dog than the ones you usually get in the theme parks. And so it is, uh, as the signage implies, from Magic Kingdoms around the world, uh, and it's named Fantasy Fair. It's actually a, there's actually a Fantasy Fair with an I uh, in Fantasyland here in our um, Magic Kingdom. Disney Quest is having its annual New Year's Eve party for $55. This year's theme is Wreck-It Ralph. Wetzel's Pretzels, the former Wetzel's Pretzels, is now very gutted and a completely empty building that will someday soon be a Starbucks. And just opposite that at D Street, another set of Vinylmation has come out. This is Animation Series number four. Uh, also coming out this week are these uh, limited edition uh, Mickey Mouse Sorcerer for 2014 and Star Wars figures. Back over to Animal Kingdom, where we are next to the Tusker House and the Dawa Bar. These construction walls have been there for some time, hiding the construction, not doing a good job of hiding all of the construction, uh, for the new Festival of the Lion King building. So they've moved beyond the cinder block and are beginning to do some things to the outside of the cinder block walls there. Kilimanjaro Safari has had a change since I've been on it um, a few months ago. Here we are at the lion enclosure area, and the zebras are now visible in this part of the safari. So instead of being in the very last enclosure, they're now mixed in with the uh, ostriches and the white rhinos. And so uh, there is still a chance to see the zebras on the safari. Magic Kingdom Tree has come up now that they've finished the parade taping for the Very Merry Christmas Parade. And in the um, Tomorrowland entrance, you'll see this construction wall at Stitch's Great Escape. These were the fast pass machines. This will soon be uh, kiosks for My Magic Plus. And in fact, they've taken away all mention of fast pass at Stitch. There's just a standby line now. So presumably that's now off the, the um, fast pass list. We are in the up ramp at the exit to Space Mountain here. And these screens have been here for a little while, and I haven't really taken a picture of them before. And I thought I would do so just for completeness. And then I noticed things like uh, Dan Truman talking about liquid methane or Grace Stamper talking about frozen seas. This is not just tongue-in-cheek stuff. Uh, these are characters from the Disney movie Armageddon. So uh, they are uh, giving a kind of reference to their own history there. It's always nice when they do that over to Storybook Circus, where I just wanted to do a quick memory check. I don't remember this carpet on the outside being the solid green color uh, and then having the kind of circus carpets on the inside there. Could be that I'm wrong on that, but it seemed to me that there was a different color out here originally, maybe even more of this canvas stuff, actually. Um, and just caught my eye as something perhaps a little different this time around, as did this T-shirt of uh, Darth Vader riding the Dumbo uh, character, Dumbo attraction. In the back of this land, the hot dog carts were not open, despite it being a somewhat busy day. They did have Tomorrowland Terrace Noodle Station open, but not these hot dog carts. There's the other fantasy fair that I mentioned earlier, actually. It's a shop right next to Philhar Magic, And this is usually the stroller parking. That's why I'm taking the picture. The strollers are all gone. And so it's much easier to walk through the area now. It turns out the strollers have moved to the other side of the carousel, which was an, an even wider open area before. Now they're lined up in rows. And I think it looks great. I'm happy that they've made this change. It's a Small World has reopened from its refurbishment. A lot of things are moving and working inside. It looks fantastic. I couldn't remember if this wall was always here at the very end of the line. So I'm on the boat, obviously, just starting the attraction. It struck me that that wall might be new. 
definitely uh, new in the last year or so has been these um, these large rectangular signs currently saying things like goodbye in various languages. Uh, they are screens and for a while they were turned off or they had cardboard over them. Now they're turned on as screens. So uh, presumably those are going to be up and coming as My Magic Plus interactions. Over to the Seven Dwarfs Mine Coaster where I wanted to, to point out something very specific with this shot. We're uh, at a distance using a telephoto lens and the Mine Coaster's in the front. How obvious is it to a visitor, um, especially for the first time, that this is actually two attractions? So in the front you've got the Mine Coaster, in the back you've got the Little Mermaid Mountain. And they've got rocks that seem to match each other and presumably there'll be fake grasses coming into the Snow, the Snow White Coaster as well. So that it would really look like, from a distance, um, one unified whole. And I thought that was just a fantastic thing. And I'm happy that they've gone to that length when it comes to uh, the theme that they're going to do. Now, obviously, they've got more and more fencing set up, harder and harder to get a glimpse of what's going on with the tracks. These, uh, these buzzers, these vultures, were recently confirmed by the Disney Parks blog uh, that they are, in fact, artifacts from the Snow White ride. So we've got a little bit of a hidden history holdover in the new version of the Snow White attraction once it comes up. And they're outdoor creatures now, uh, despite being indoor originally. They're starting to add trees. So we've swung around to the Gaston side of the mountain here, and there are some trees visible there. We're going to have a look deep inside that drop there. And if you're seeing the same thing I'm seeing, this is the drop as it comes out of the mountain. It looks to me like there might, in fact, be a double drop or a dip drop as we come out. A little bit of a spoiler there. And then the final peak hole into uh, the construction area, you'll see even more of the trees have been added. We're seeing less and less of the track, and so it's getting closer and closer all the time. Switching over to Fort Wilderness Campgrounds, this mater caught my eye, and we are here to see Christmas decorations. Turns out there's a long history of people decorating their campers and the surrounding campsites with uh, electronics of various kinds, lights especially, but many of these inflatables as well, uh, and they even hold competitions amongst each other. And this is one of the competition winners for the past couple of years, the castle guy. And what you're seeing here is a row of trees, a second row of trees, the castle with many lights on it, and some star lights as well as uh, lights on the camper itself. And uh, it's all been synced to music. And so he'll play Wishes, let's say, and everything plays out like one like an Osborne um, spectacle of lights, really, just done in uh, a slightly lower, lower um, grandeur fashion. But it's still a fantastic thing to see. I was really very impressed with that. Grim Grinning Ghosts decked out for the holidays. And then this one, which is a walkthrough campsite. You can see the rope lights uh, down on the, on the floor. And we'll take a few pictures to show you uh, what you can see when you walk through this particular campsite. Some smaller models like you see here. Some Disney models, like these monorail models with the uh, Disney landmarks going through, uh, as well as just lots and lots of these inflatables and lights around the trees and so forth. And then finally, I bring you the elusive um, accordion bus. Uh, so this is the bus with um, two sides. The correct name is the articulated bus. It's got a, an accordion-type feature in the middle so that with one driver, as it swings around the corner, the other side comes with it. Uh, they've been testing this at Disney World lately in the high-impact, high-traffic places like All Stars, the Magic Kingdom, and so forth. I just haven't been able to snap a picture of it until finally I got this blurry one on the road on my way out. So that brings us to our game, where in Walt Disney World was this? And this was the, the one from last week. I'll show you the wider shot. Happy New Year is uh, what's going on here. And didn't get much uh, in the way of votes. This was actually from uh, Country Bear Christmas Special. And so this was the set dressing for the Big Al character. He was celebrating New Year. Everyone else was Christmas. He was celebrating New Year's. And that brings us to this week's quiz. Uh, maybe a little bit less hard this time around. A bunch of NASA type stuff and I'm not gonna say more than that obviously until I hear your votes so let me know in the comments where in Walt Disney World was this that brings us to the end of this week we thank you as always for your attention and we'll catch you guys next time